Who does Sid Kagen respect from anime stats? I think you guys enjoyed the last video. Let's watch this one. Okay. He does this like PowerPoint slide presentation. Look, Zenon Griffey rank. So the first person, the bottom of the list is Zenon Griffey. Zero percent respect. Then again, so does the rest of these guys. Zenon. Sid didn't respect Zenon because he was weak and used Diablo's pills to get power. You're right. In fact, there's a moment in episode 5 where Zenon Griffey takes the pills and says, I am the Almighty Awakened or some shit. And Sid's like, no, the Almighty does not borrow powers. Proceeded to slap him around with his fists only. Next one, Lutheran. I think this is Sherry Barnett's like adoptive dad. Zero percent respect. Sid was genuinely angry upon learning what Lutheran did to Sherry's mother. Really? He actually cared? I thought he doesn't give a fuck about that stuff. He's like, oh, cool, whatever. Cool to know that. Getan, another 0% respect. Sid thinks that Getan robbed him, and that makes Sid very angry. <laughs> it's the coins. Where did my coins? They never found the coins. Delta and Sid was fucking digging the entire time. They never no, they found something though. Delta found something. I thought it was like a present that maybe Sid left for Delta because of how they were talking about Santa Claus, but maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Next, another 0%. Perv asshat. Sid thinks that Perv is a despicable human being. I mean, not only, and, and this is from like what? How many months ago? This is from two weeks ago, actually. Okay, so it's pretty recent, but still, knowing what Perv asshat did to like Oriana's mom, Jesus Christ. I think honestly, the mom is worse than Perv asshat. Next is Grease, another character that just got absolutely fodderized in episode two when Sid was still a child for him. Sid found him so weak that he thought Grease was just a regular bandit. Yeah, and he even gave him lessons. Sid, like when they were fighting, I'm pretty sure he actually gave lessons on what you should be doing. Next one is Crimson. Another zero respect. Sid killed Crimson. Why is Poe? He only gets five. Okay, let's get, not get, let's not get distracted. Sid gets, Sid killed Crimson so swiftly that he couldn't even utter a word. That was pretty funny. It came out of fucking nowhere. Crimson was doing his, you know, internal, like, like a villain monologue. And then Sid just showed up, silent, I'm atomic. It was pretty cool. And then finally, someone with a little bit of respect coming in at 5%. <laughs> Sid just hangs around Poe due to him fitting his mob character. I'd like to think that Sid cares about Skill and Poe, right? It's because they're actual friends. But if you think about it, Maybe he really just hangs out with them because they're just such perfect background characters. The next one, and pay attention to the names, guys. It's Poe Tato. This is his first name. Tato is his last name. Scale is his first name. Atoll is the last name. All right, six percent, six percent respect. Sid considers Scale a loser. <laughs> So you tell me a guy that he just straight up considers a loser gets more respect than Poe? Like, Skell is a fucking loser. Still higher respect percentage. <laughs> oh my god. But he, yeah, I mean, they're good friends. In my opinion, I think these two are actually good friends. They are kind of clowns, though. Next one is Juggernaut. Black Jugga Jugga at 8% respect. Sid considered him a fighter. Good enough to distract Delta for some time. Apparently, Delta fought... Black Jugga Jugga for a couple days before Black Jugga Jugga got his head cut off. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but apparently that might have happened. Holy shit, it's Baldi. Mr. Kagano, the father. Baldi, Hagi gets 10% respect. Sid is cynical towards his bald father. Very important. Bald father, not just regular father, bald father, and doesn't hold much respect for him. Everyone who's bald in this show, they just get memed on so fucking hard. I think the author that hates bald people. <laughs> Next one, Anerose at 10% respect. Sid was impressed that besides himself, only Anerose won a battle in the goddess's trial. And not only that, Anerose was able to, you know, detect mundane man special techniques, you know, the neck cracks. That was actually so cute how she, she kept in the neck cracks. The sneezes too, right? Remember the sneezes in the neck cracks? Now, we get Iris Midger at 12%. Sid respected Iris initially, but that turned to disappointment once he fought her. She, it wasn't even a fight. Monday Man didn't even have a fucking weapon. 
during that entire fight, Iris was fucking hallucinating based on the little movements that Monday Man was doing. And she started panicking. We just defeated her without a weapon. And then she picked up the fucking legendary fire artifact and did a 2v1 against Shadow. But can you really call that a 2v1? I think it was more a Beatrix versus Shadow. Iris wasn't doing shit. Next, we have 16% respect for Sherry Barnett. Sid actually cared for Sherry, consistently protecting her from terrorists. That's right, we made Sherry the main character of that one episode, remember? And we gave her a bunch of chocolates too. Those chocolate moments are actually so sus, the way she was eating it. All right, next one. Ooh, 6% gap between the siblings. Alexia coming in at 18% respect level. Sid thinks Alexia is annoying, but respects her swordsmanship because it's so basic, rudimentary, fundamental, just like his swordsmanship. That's actually a pretty important thing, isn't it? All right. After that, we got the Vampire Slayer Mary at 20% respect. Mary's monologue was an inspiration for Sid's action during the Red Moon arc. That's right. The moon is red. You know, run if you fear for your life or some shit. The fucking, the hour of awakening is near. Those are some very funny lines that he kept repeating. Mary was actually goaded for those lines. Next up, a Shadow Garden member, Nui, at 20% respect. Sid was impressed by her, a newcomer, securing the top 20 spot in the Shadow Garden. She actually knows that, uh, well, the fact that he didn't even know what, like, what, when Sid heard of, like, 666, 559, he was like, what are this? Fucking employee IDs? So the fact that he's aware that Nui came in and secured top 20 spot. I'm surprised he even know what a fucking top 20 spot is in his organization. Maybe anime stats made this one up. Who knows? Next up, another Shadow Garden member. Then again, she betrayed us. 22%, sorry, 22% respect. Sid developed genuine respect for Rose after she rebelled against the marriage with Duke Perv. I like Rose a lot. Oriana, she's a great character. I think she's getting one of the most developments too. And yeah, she... I don't know if he cares. I don't think Sid has any romantic interest for any girl. But if there was a girl that should be a ship, I could see Sid and Rose becoming a ship. It's just Rose is... The way that Rose like depends on Sid, even the last episode, how like Sid was playing the fucking piano on her balcony, then he just disappears with the ring that he accidentally dropped off. He didn't mean to do that, right? But the ring was in the piano like chair, and he's like, "Oh my god, is he proposing to me right now?" I, I think they got a good thing going on. Next up, another Shadow Garden member. We got Ada at twenty-three percent respect. Ada's intellect surpasses even Sid's understanding. Yeah, I mean, it exists so that we can just have all these um, technological advancements, all these different research and science that like, you don't have to have an explanation for. Aidas can just figure it out. Don't worry about it. Coming in, 24% respect. We got the war goddess, the burger Borgar enjoy herself, Beatrix. She could actually, who would win? Beatrix eating burger or Freedren eating burger? Sid respected Beatrix's strength, admitting as she was in league with his subordinates. Yeah, I think Beatrix, compared to some other Shadow Garden girls, maybe she can't compete with Alpha, right? Because they're completely like, they got different training, the different powers that they were given by Shadow. But still, if you compare Beatrix to any other girl, right? Not like, obviously not Aurora, not Elizabeth, but still, in terms of power, I think Beatrix is definitely one of the strongest. Now, we have 25% for the vampire queen herself, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is one of the stronger opponents Sid has faced. Yes. I don't know exactly how strong she is, but I think she's definitely in that top tier category of opponents that actually give Sid some sort of, I don't know, struggles or some entertainment in a battle. Yukime, 28% respect. Sid enjoyed role playing as a secret agent John Smith in her presence. Yeah, I, I, I think Sid, what does... Sid think that Yukimi was also playing along with the whole John Smith act. Is that why Sid likes her so much? Because she's like, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that you're so happy to, you know, um, entertain me with the, the super secret agent to, yeah, elite to Asian to arc. But that was very fun. And she's still around. And Getan technically gave us blessings. Because as Getan was dying, <laughs> he's like, you. 
<laughs> you are worthy of taking my bitch road. Please take Yukime. And he's like, but he was thinking at the same time. He's like, the coins, right? You're talking about the coins. Where's my fucking money, Getan? Next, we got Epsilon. Epsilon gets 30% respect. Sid acknowledges her skills with slime bodysuits and thinks it's part of her training. That's right. There was even a direct comment made in the most recent episode of MC Shadow in the hot tub or the pool or the bath scene. You know, Epsilon's titties were there and, 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 and Sid specifically said, wow, I can't even tell if those are fake or real anymore. And Epsilon made a very funny comment and she said, yeah, I don't know what happened. It's just natural. Natural my fucking ass. Now, is Epsilon my favorite Shadow Garden member? Look, I was one of the biggest proponents of Epsilon in season one for many reasons. I like the fact that she struggles against the card she was dealt. But she doesn't stop there. She surpasses her own limitations with magic by having slime reinforced titties and ass. Not only that, she had many funny running gags whenever her titties were cut off. And she's like, did anyone see that? No, ma'am. Funny running gags. And there was a really cool scene in the, um, I, in the Nelson arc where she was fighting some of the, I think, Cult of Diablos members. She popped off. There were some really cool moments from Epsilon in Season 1, but unfortunately, Season 2, she didn't really get too much scenes. Delta, honestly, has been hard carrying. Like, Epsilon is getting more scenes recently with the piano playing, but goddamn, if you compare it to the Delta fan service, it's pretty hard, man. Delta is just too OP. Next up, Zeta. Five more percent of respect than Epsilon. 35. Sid thinks that Zeta is the most talented amongst the Seven Shadows. That is quite a compliment. Zeta was doing a bunch of her own espionage solo missions by herself. She does seem very talented in whatever she does. But her rival, Delta, coming at 40% respect. Sid is annoyed by Delta's affection, but very impressed by her keen sense. Wait, he's annoyed? Really? Oh, you're telling me. Every time Delta comes in saying, Bosu, 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 I want to have a hundred kids with you, Bosu. <laughs> Sid thinks that, damn, this dog fucking annoying. I hope that's not true. That's kind of mean. Please be nicer to the dog. Now, we have our own blood related sister. 45% respect. Sid genuinely cares for Claire and respects her strength and dedication. But he's always like fucking off whenever Claire's saying, hey, come do this. Come watch me do this. And it's like, nah, I don't care. Like, leave me alone. He seems very disinterested. All right. We have Beta next at 48% respect. Sid finds joy in the missions Beta assigns to him, fulfilling his roleplay fantasy. <laughs> Beta assigns missions to Sid? I never thought of it like that. <laughs> I guess, technically, if she's always, like, informing him. I mean, there is also... The fact that, you know that room that Sid's decorated with chair and the fancy bottles? And the window was open, so he had to have the fire there. Remember that? There is that one room that he only is ever with Beta. Beta, like, debriefs him on what's going on. And Sid's, looks like, Sid's like, um, facing the other way, looking at the window. If you think about it, no one else comes in that room except Beta, right? It's their secret private meeting. So I guess, yeah, it makes sense. Next one, yeah. Huge gap. So far, we've had like a couple percent differences. Now we have Aurora at 60% respect. Aurora is the strongest opponent Sid has faced and quickly developed respect towards her. I think the respect at the end of the day comes down to power level and strength. Like how much can you entertain me? Because we know how Sid fights, right? He likes to kind of test the opponent to see if he can have a conversation so that he can then have the perfect counter. It's like a dialogue to him, right? It's art. And Aurora was able to fulfill that. That's why he's higher in the respect level. And technically, this is Diablos at the end of the day, right? All right. Someone higher than Aurora. We got Alpha. 65% respect. Alpha is Sid's oldest friend, whom he regards as a near equal. Really? Near equal? Of all the shadow... She is the main girl. She is the first girl that we ever save in the possession. I don't know about the near equal part, but of all the Shadow Garden girls, yeah, he probably feels the most fondest towards her. Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. The last one, Gamma, 15 more percent than anyone else. So hold up. The fact that I made the comment about this respect level being proportional to the amount of power or the way that they can entertain Sid in combat might not be true. Gamma comes in at 80% respect. 
<laughs> Sid is jealous of how much money Gamma has collected. Okay, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. There, Sid is very money hungry, right? And Gamma is the foundation of Mitsugoshi Shadow Garden. The operations cannot happen without the funding from Gamma. She is fucking loaded. She's a sugar mama. Sid's always like stealing money from her too. And yeah, he was jealous. The whole point of the John Smith arc of trying to take down Shadow, uh, sorry, Mitsugoshi was the fact that, you know, these girls got to go and he's like, fuck, I want to do my own thing too. Too, but unfortunately that didn't happen gamma still on top now is she actually the most respected member who knows i want you guys to be very respectful towards enemy stats because the power scaling one guys these numbers are coming out of his fucking ass okay like he's making it entertaining there is some reasoning involved in his thought process but come on are you gonna tell me like yeah by reading the manga or the light novel, I was able to deduce a fucking 15% gap between Alpha and Gamma. No, that's not the whole point. The point is to enjoy the video. So don't take this too seriously, guys. Still, great video from Anime Stats. Please go like the video and sub to his channel if you like his videos.